former Nissan CEO Carlos Ghosn is now out of jail after posting bail. Dagan McDowell right now with the very latest. Dagan, good morning to you. An what incredible a story. story, Maria Bartiromo, that you've been on from moment one. After 108 days behind bars, Carlos Ghosn released from a Tokyo jail after paying nearly $9 million in bail. You can take a look at photos of Ghosn as he was leaving that detention center there. This after two previous bail requests were rejected. Let's go to the statement from Carlos Ghosn. I am extremely grateful for my family and friends who have stood by me throughout this terrible ordeal. I am innocent and totally committed to vigorously defending myself in a fair trial against these meritless and unsubstantiated accusations. Under the terms of Ghosn's release, he will live in a court-approved home in Tokyo. He cannot leave the country or communicate with people overseas via phone or computer. The Wall Street Journal reporting that Carlos Ghosn's wife and one of his daughters arrived at the jail, according to television footage. But his release, as the journal points out, it marks um, really a kind of stunning arrest for Carlos Ghosn. It happened on November 19th, shortly after his private jet landed in Tokyo. Nissan executives and Tokyo prosecutors had been investigating him for months over allegations of financial misconduct. He has been living Living in a small cell, and Maria, I want you to get into some of the details of this, uh, at the Tokyo Detention Center, undergoing hours of interrogation each day without his lawyer present. The Wall Street Journal even writes an editorial about this today and just points out what we've seen of the judicial system in, in Japan and in terms of this, in your words, coup that was orchestrated against Carlos Ghosn. It really looks like a justice system from a third world nation. Maria? It really does, Dagan. And from the beginning, I, I pointed it out because I know Carlos Ghosn to have integrity. And it's very suspicious, these claims about any financial misconduct that he did. What I can tell you for sure is that his daughter, Caroline, and his wife picked him up. He was disguised. And as you can see, he's got a mask on his face, and he's wearing a jacket with stripes as if he's a worker, a local worker. Uh, his lawyers tried to disguise him as he was coming out, but the press obviously figured it out and had cameras there. Uh, also, I can tell you that while he was in his cell uh, since November 19th, as we know, he was disoriented with time because they had such terrible treatment of him, they would not let him have a wristwatch. They would not let him know what time it was. Uh, they would not turn off the lights at night, so he was always disoriented. Uh, some people think that this was a tactic of mental abuse. He hadn't seen his face in a mirror in three months, and he was forced to lie in bed uh, lights on from 9.30 at night to 7.30 in the morning. The family is relieved this morning, obviously, that he is in uh, a home in Japan. His bail was obviously denied twice, as you, as you reported, Dagan. Look, now he's just going to fight vigorously to, 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 to prove his innocence but, here. And, we'll see. And, and, Maria, really quickly, we can talk about it as the morning goes on and in the days and weeks and even months ahead as it leads up to his trial. But what's really stunning is, as the Wall Street Journal pointed this out, the prosecutors haven't provided any evidence to the, uh, uh, really any real evidence of these accusations. It's about failing to report deferred compensation um, and some other issues. But this is something that should have best been handled in the Wall Street Journal editorial's words, in a boardroom rather than a courtroom. And That's to right. treat him in such a stunning fashion, to keep him in jail for three and a half months over accusations of financial crimes and basically torture this man. That's right. It's really stunning that the corporate world has not rallied around Carlos Ghosn and push back against the treatment it sure by is. Japanese authorities. It sure is, because we know that there was an underlying coup going on. His right. number two wanted to take over Nissan and end all discussions of a potential merger with Renault. Carlos Ghosn was overseeing an alliance of Renault, Nissan, and Mitsubishi. And he did that because it was cost effective and he was sharing parts through all of the three companies. But his real motive was to merge Renault 
Renault, which is a French company, with Nissan, a Japanese company. But his number two connected, as I'm told, my sources tell me, connected with the Minister of Industry within the Japanese government. They do not. Uh, they do not blame the prime minister of Japan. They don't even they don't blame Prime Minister Abe. They don't blame the, the, the very top, but they blame a level of ministers. The minister of business and industry is the individual who worked with his number two, who is currently the CEO of Nissan, took his job to get him out and stop all plans for a merger between Renault and Nissan. This story is not over. No, it's not. But Carla's going out of jail. Yeah, for now, that's terrific news. Thanks so much, Dave.